Marilyn Farrell, it's such a pleasure to have you on our program. Always a pleasure to see you. I wanted to ask you about this event. It's Toujours Charlie, Always Charlie. Why is that important after three years? Because it was already painful to explain how Charlie Hebdo is an anti-racist and just secularist newspaper before the attacks. It became completely uh, really difficult to, to endure the fact that we have to continue to explain that after their murders. And today, most of the French are still very, very uh, in support with Charlie Hebdo. But still, we read, we are hearing people who continue to be against Charlie Hebdo, but not only against, who are really defaming uh, Charlie Hebdo, uh, trying to say that they are too much, too provocative, that somehow they deserve it. Um, so we need to say that we are still Charlie just because of them. But this idea of provocation for drawing a cartoon, for speaking, and of course this is something that they say about people in other countries yeah. as well. You know, Raif Badawi shouldn't have provoked the Saudi regime. I explain this. Why is this happening? And why is it so absurd to call it a provocation? I think that when people are too cowards to face the real totalitarianism, the real threat, which is today fanatism. Not only today, since a while actually. Um, they have to find excuses to not resist. And somehow it is more easy to blame those who resist, um, to justify to not join them. So, as you said, Raif Badawi uh, deserve it. Uh, the protest in Iran is not about fanatism, it's about something else. It's always about something else, or it's not always not the moment to face the problem that we have with fanatism. Our fanatics are, are definitely the new totalitarianism. We defeat them when it was from the church. Why we should accept it when it is from another religion? Uh, the, the people who are in this uh, event they are secularist activists who are also very, very vigilant when the Catholics are trying to fight against the, the right for abortion, are going to put under threats the, the, the women's rights. Uh, okay, why we should um, be silent when there is another fanatism, we do exactly the same and sometimes worse by killing people. But what about racism? Because racism is, and bigotry is a real concern, obviously. It is for you as well. And I know it's also for mm -hmm. Charlie, isn't it? So what do you say to people who say, well, if, if you, when you do this, you're actually aiding the racists and the bigots and the far right? As you perfectly know, it's, it's absolutely the contrary, actually. It's because we think that um, Muslim citizens are just the same as everyone and they deserve to be treated the, the same way we treated the Catholic ones, um, that they can be smart enough to understand the sense of humor, that they can be smart enough to accept that people do not think the same than them, at least in Europe. I mean, we are supposed to be in democracy. So we are not supposed to apply the rules of the most intolerant and sometimes very racist, not sometimes, always very racist fanatics movement. So it's exactly the opposite. It's to be very for equality, that to defend secularism for all, to defend the same law for all. Um, but I'm, I must say I'm really still in shock when I'm reading especially sometimes the British press. I give you just one example. You know it by heart, unfortunately, Maya. But on the Ramadan case, for example, I'm fighting since now, what, 30 years to explain that Tariq Ramadan is a fundamentalist. You can give him a mic if you want, but don't present him as a modernist Muslim. He's fighting the modernist Muslims, calling them Islamophobic or false Muslims. So just I'm asking to a journalist to do their job and say that he's a fundamentalist. And now today also people are realizing that he's more than that. He's someone who is not only having a double standard in, this, in his speech, but in his life. And still, when there is when there is uh, uh, inquiries and, and papers in the British press is most of the time to say that in France we are so Islamophobic that we didn't speak only about Hervé Weinstein but also about Tariq Ramadan. But sorry, it's equality to speak about Hervé Weinstein and also about Tariq Ramadan when there is victims of both of those guys who are claiming to be raped.
And what about the victims anyway, right? Where, where is their say? They are fighting uh, the... No, the uh, sorry, what I mean is, uh, it's as if victims don't exist. It's only about yeah. defending... Uh, the rapist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the rapist. Uh, it's crazy, actually it's crazy. Uh, because, again, I, I, the precaution the accusation I've heard about, again, those victims who are just saying that they have been raped by Tariq Ramadan, I didn't read it in the press about the victim of Hervé Weinstein. So if there is a double standard, it's there. It's not in the, in the French press where we just try to cover when there is victim of rape. And what about this thing you've said about how you need to fight, uh, you can't excuse one uh, in order to defend another? Do you know, you, you said something about how you shouldn't excuse uh, racism uh, by defending fundamentalism. There is, there is in the left, in certain left, a certain idea that if we want to resist to racism, we should avoid to speak about fanatism because there is this possibility that the danger of fanatism creates racism. But I really do believe that it is exactly the contrary. It is because leftists continue to resist to all fundamentalism, all fanatism, that we will, um, we will push away the extreme right, we will show to the people that there is an alternative to the hate, which is secularism. It's a constructive way to resist to fanatism and by the same way to resist to racism because the extreme right cannot have this empty space to say, but at least we are saying the truth about the Islamist fanatics. So, honestly, if people who wrote since years that France will elect Marine Le Pen, because I'm, I'm, I'm reading that also in the British and American press since years, that we will elect Marine Le Pen. We didn't vote for the Brexit. But they did, yeah. <laughs> the English did. We didn't elect Donald Trump. Trump. <laughs> and we stopped Marine Le Pen. And why is it so? Because we have secularism. Because we have another way to say when there is problems, to face them, not cover them, not avoid them, not deny them, but still to have a constructive way, which is an anti-racist way, which is secularism. Two last questions. One is on the thing where people have said, uh, you know, you're starting a war, Charlie Hebdo, and <laughs> sort of criticism of starting a war. What's your response to that? It's quite crazy. Already before the Cartoons Affair, the people were able to think that to publish cartoons in the middle of a, a worldwide polemic where Danish cartoonists at this time were under death threats, that it was the cartoonists who were doing the war and not the fanatics who want to kill them for a cartoon. But it's becoming more and more crazy now because they continue to say so. The, the cartoonists are dead. The fanatics are still at rage. They are killing everyone now. And still there is people to continue to say, but if you resist, to those fanatics, you're starting a war. I mean, those people, um, at least, at least, they can keep silent. They don't have to blame the people who are, who are brave enough to do the dirty work and resist, at least. Final question on the protests in Iran. Mm. What do you think about it and you have a message? I am uh, from the bottom of my heart with uh, with the Iranian Democrats who finally are, again, I, we were very moved in 2009 and we knew the bravery, uh, the need to go back in the streets because we know the way it did end the, the first time or the last time. I really do believe and you know that the Iranian people are far more uh, Democrats and secularists than their regime actually more, more and more are becoming or atheist or incredibly anti-religious, but maybe more than in France, because they are living under the theocrats, so they know what is the cost of that. We cannot have the bravery um, or we cannot do more than to support them, but at least the minimum, again, it's the question of responsibility for the journalist, at least we need to support them and to cover um, all the images, the footages they are again brave enough to record uh, because I really believe that the situation is very different than the Green Movement, that the tension between Saudis and Iran, the, also the Kurd question is very important because after what the Iranian regime did outside the country and the Iranian army is outside the country right now, 
and most of it. Um, all the, the energy, the, the outside war, we did cost so much in a time where the Iranian people didn't have enough to pay, to have their salary to, to eat. And this situation is on the, also at the base of the rage, with growing. And I think that the situation worldwide, maybe this time, can be more um, full of hope than the last time. So let's continue to hope. Thank you very much. Thanks to you.